Dear viewers of Adventure Gamers, we're still here at Gamescom with my guests Doug Shaver and Ragnar Tornquist from Red Thread Games. Welcome, guys. In the beginning, I would like to get to a question that actually you answered on Kickstarter, but not every one of our readers is familiar with the answer. So I would really like to ask you, uh, how did the game Dreamfall Chapters turn into an episodic game? And what does it mean for the build-up of the story? The question is how did it turn from an episodic game into a non-episodic game, which is actually what happened. When we started the Kickstarter, we sort of looked at what we're doing and we felt that we have experience making sort of full games, not episodic games. And so the story that had been written to be episodic and the game that was always supposed to be episodic turned into one full game. And that was our intention going into the Kickstarter and beyond, but afterwards, I think especially uh, three, four months ago, we took a look at what we had and we realized that the story is becoming longer and more complex than we thought, which is what happens in game development. Uh, things change, especially when it comes to storytelling. And we knew that if we were going to do it as one full game, first off, we wouldn't be done for a long time yet. And we also wouldn't be able to put the amount of time and resources and effort into the game as we'd want to. We would have at least had to um, make some compromise on quality and it would have taken a long time. So, and we didn't want to do that and we have a story to tell. So we toyed with the idea of splitting the game in two, but that didn't feel right because you'd have a part one and then a long wait and then part two. And then it struck us, why not just do what we originally planned to do and, and make the game we actually designed, which was originally an episodic game. Divided into five episodes, to what we call books. And there are natural breaks. That structure has always been there. Uh, time passes between each of these books. Not a lot of time, but enough to make it sort of stand on its own a little bit. And it would give us the breathing room we need in order to really focus on each part of the game. And also it will allow us to release to start making money and to put that money back into it further improving the quality uh, and consistency of uh, subsequent episodes. And our goal is to have uh, all five episodes out by, by next year or within next year. So we don't expect there to be a huge wait between any of the episodes. Uh, we're not going to promise anything in terms of sort of weeks or months now because that's always a stupid thing to do. but. After book one is released, we will then, of course, talk more about book two and when that's due, but it won't be a long wait. Well, we, um, we have uh, most of uh, the content for book two uh, already uh, um, finished, uh, without the, the amount of polish, obviously, that we have uh, in, uh, on book one. But uh, So book two will be uh, ready to start polishing that uh, immediately after uh, book one is done. In my interviews, there's a quote by Roger Ebert that I really like to use, and I'm sorry if I'm using it once more, but I'm, I want to use it one last time. And it's by, uh, like I said, by Roger Ebert, a legendary film critic, who said that um, games dilute narrative. They are mixing two different things that don't enhance each other, gameplay and story. It's like chess boxing. Um, how, how do you feel about that statement? And in how far is Dreamfall Chapters closing that gap between story and gameplay well i mean first off roger ebert is a uh, was an amazing film critic uh, but you know he probably never played a game in his life and uh, we shouldn't get too focused on what he said because uh, it doesn't really matter it's it's a quote i like to use it's also one that was made by steven spielberg and george lucas um where they were talking about storytelling and talking about games and seeing the moment you put a controller in someone's hand, something in the heart clicks off. 
sort of like you can't possibly feel anything from controlling a character in the game. And that's in a way, in a, way a worse statement because that's saying like there's no way for games to have any kind of emotional connection with the player. And we all know that's wrong. We all played games where we sit down and, and you feel so connected to the characters, you feel so connected to the world. It brings tears in your eyes when things happen to them. You, you can be as gripped and, 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 and affected by characters in a game as you can in any story. Uh, storytelling is storytelling. Of course, the way you do that in a game is oftentimes with cutscenes and, and dialogues and things like that. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's, it's a very traditional way of telling a story. And uh, it's actually not that far away from how stories in action movies are told where you have exposition, action scene, exposition, action scene. It's, in a way, it's the same, except in a game you control the action scene. And nobody's ever said that an action movie can't convey feeling or anything like that. Um, but the way we're addressing it in Dreamfall, um, I mean, Dreamfall Chapters is first and foremost a story. And it's a story-driven game. So it's a game that's not driven by mechanics, it's driven by the story and the characters. Uh, some people complain that Dreamfall was more story than gameplay. In many ways, I think that game was, and it sounds horribly stuck up, but it, Dreamfall was ahead of its time a little bit because a lot of games today are very story driven and have very little game mechanics and people are not complaining anymore some people complain and say it's not a game but of course it's a game and it's accepted but in a funny way we're actually still going back a little bit and we're introducing more sort of gameplay in Dreamfall chapters than there was in Dreamfall we are introducing a little bit more involved puzzle gameplay we are introducing a lot more exploration so we are addressing those things, even though we stand by the choices we made in Dreamfall, uh, except for the combat. Um, but, but there was nothing fundamentally wrong with that approach. I think we're just doing a better job of it in Dreamfall chapters. And of course, there's the choice consequence mechanic to where players shape the story as they progress through the game. Yeah, and, uh, and I think that's the most important thing we're doing this time, to evolve uh, the narrative uh, in, in, uh, in, uh, in games, or in our games anyway. Uh, it's that we can play around, like the inherent differences between a movie and a game uh, allows us to explore different emotions. Um, and by choosing, uh, making choices, you get to explore uh, feelings like guilt, which is very difficult to explore in a movie because you never have any responsibility for the actions of the, of the protagonist. Whereas in a game, you are the one who actually chooses and may choose wrong, which may lead to emotions if, like if, guilt. If there is a wrong and a right. If there is a wrong and a right. But I mean, you can then, rather than empathize with the character, you can feel responsible for their actions, which is very, very different uh, in a game, uh, something you can't do in a movie. Quite a big number of people on the team worked on the secret world. And I was wondering, maybe at first sight, it may seem like a very different game. But in how far did the experience of working on such a project still help the development of Dreamfall chapters. What did you learn from it, from the Secret World? I mean, the Secret World was the biggest game we'd ever done, uh, especially in terms of um, the storytelling. Uh, I think it's the, one of the most ambitious sto story-driven games of all time, simply because it took a genre that's not known for good storytelling and built a narrative around that. But it taught us a lot about uh, writing good characters, pace, world building. But, you know, that game built on Dreamfall because Secret World Team was made up of a lot of people who came from Dreamfall. And it's actually those people who have come together again to meet Dreamfall chapters. Um, but, yeah, I mean, Secret World was a very different game and it was a completely different challenge. But some of the puzzle gameplay, some of the adventure gameplay in Secret World was actually much better adventure gameplay than what we had in Dreamfall. So... I think actually, ironically, through making an MMORPG, we learn more about making better adventure gameplay, which is kind of funny. Uh, adventure gameplay that's driven by story rather than uh, being arbitrarily uh, arbitrary roadblocks or uh, you know something to uh, create a puzzle because you need a puzzle. Uh, it was a lot driven by the story, the gameplay, and the secret world. And I think we learned a lot from that. 
And personally also, I feel that attention to detail in the world building, how no stone is there without a reason, how everything is integrated into the storytelling and the backstory of, uh, because the, the secret world had the longest backstory in mankind. It went back to the, you know, before, way before the time, time of the dinosaurs. Uh, and we had, you know, we had storylines going all, all, all that way. And, and when you have that, you need to make sure that all of that comes out in some way, because you can't randomly have a character telling all that backstory. So you need to put it into every detail of, of the landscape. And I think that's, for me at least, what uh, I learned most from, uh, from the Secret World production. Despite of Dreamfall chapters, you're also working on another project, or you're preparing it, um, Draugen. Can you give us a short overview of the project? Short from us? <laughs> We're never short. Draugen is a um, first-person um, adventure game. Psychological horror set in Norway in the 1920s. You play uh, uh, an American entomologist, botanist, scientist, writer who arrives in Norway to find that everybody in the small village he was visiting, supposed to visit, are gone. And he's stuck there for a week and he has to uh, investigate and learn what happened to the people in this village. And through that, learn more about himself and his role in the world. And it's a very different game from uh, anything we've ever done before. It's a game about solitude and isolation. It's a game about uh, the human condition. It's a game almost without characters. There's still dialogue. Just, we can't do a game without dialogue. But there's mostly inner monologue. And it's a game that is very sort of oppressive. It's not a traditional horror game. But it's more like a lingering psychological horror game. But it's definitely going to be quite disturbing and scary. And it's coming out next year. Not, not scary in a like uh, ah, scary, uh, scary. It's more like the 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 dark thoughts and the the deep uh, psychological horror. Uh, it sounds uh, very um, um, pretentious, I suppose. But uh, but that's uh, yeah, that's what it is. A while ago, you said that uh, you would go on Kickstarter again for the project. Is that still the plan? And can you give us a time frame of when we can expect a game on Kickstarter? We're not going to do it until we feel we've delivered uh, on a lot about Dreamfall Promise because Kickstarter is sort of a it's a great way to fund games, and it's it's great for everybody actually because players get to, to support the games they want, and in return they actually get a pretty cheap copy of games. It's great for, for developers because we don't have to go to publishers or uh, get outside fan financing, which can be very hard and very time-consuming and very uh, come with a lot of caveats. It's also but trust. yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's also why we at least want to release um, uh, a couple of books from Dreamful before we sort of go back to the world where people can see that oh, these guys are actually delivering. They made something. They can trust us to take their money again. But of course, uh, you know, if if Dreamful also does well enough then hopefully we can also put much more of our own money into Draugen. Draugen is uh, in slow early development now. We're doing some writing, we're doing some research but we're not going to really do a lot of work on it until Dreamfall is out the door and we're releasing s regular episodes and, 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 and we can take part of the team off and start working on other things. I read a statement from you that you described the game as a mixture of uh, Gone Home and Amnesia. Could you tell me what your fascination is for these games? Uh, Gone Home, uh, it's fascination, fascinating because it's a really good story. And it's an unconventional story. It's, about, it's not about ghosts or monsters or space aliens or anything like that. It's about normal people in a normal world doing, dealing with problems that people deal with. And done in a way that's not groundbreaking, but it's interesting. You know, you explore this setting and through exploration you learn the story. And that's how I want game stories to be told. I think in that sense it is a game that tells, it's a perfect combination of story and medium. It's a game that couldn't, it's a, it's a story that couldn't work in a movie or, or in a novel. It, it, it's dependent on exploration of this space. Um, amnesia, because it's really... A, atmospheric and well done horror especially the parts where you're not being directly chased by monster it's just the anticipation. the anticipation and the mood of, of, of this sort of oppressive place and, and it's really really well done we also cited their Esther as an inspiration uh, and um, 
there are more games in this genre now, games that sort of uh, dare to blur the borders between storytelling and gameplay a little bit more that allow you to that allow gameplay to just be walking around as well. And that's that's fine, that's good. Uh there's not there's no reason why that can't be as much fun or as involving as, you know, doing a repetitive gameplay. During your Kickstarter campaign you first mentioned uh the longest journey home, which probably made a lot of people very happy. And I know that uh the whole thing completely depends on the sales of Dreamfall chapters. I'm very well aware of that. Um, but um, I'd be very interested in some basic info on the project. If you get a chance to make it, what's your plan? What's the concept of the whole thing? Well, we have uh, sort of talked about it and we haven't, th we know the story because this is always meant to be the conclusion of, of April Ryan's story. Longest journey home is the longest journey home. I mean, that's, that's it and that's the end of it. That's just, that's, that's the final period at the end of the final sentence. So we know the story, and the game is also supposed to be sort of a, a go back to 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 the the older point-and-click adventure games uh, with static backgrounds, uh, a point-and-click or touch interface, uh, and a game that's more slowly paced than Dreamfall chapters. Uh, and, it, and it's set in the time period between the end of Longest Journey and the beginning of, of Dreamfall, for the most part. That's as much as we're saying now, and that's really as much as what we we know. We know the style, you know, we're going to use beautiful painted backdrops and everything is in place. But yeah, we're not going to... Dragon is our next game and uh, Longest Journey Home it would be great if it could be our next game after that. But that really depends on how well Dreamfall Chapters does. If we can recoup our costs with Dreamfall Chapters and have enough left over to... Uh, to support the team in order to do that, then we'll do that, yeah, definitely. Uh, if not, then we can't, so yeah, so hopefully a lot of people will buy Dreamfall Chapters and and, and we can do it. Yeah. It's something we would love to, to, to make, because uh, we, love, we love the universe, uh, and we've lived with it for, uh, I don't know, 20 years for you? 20 years. <laughs> a little bit less for me, but still, uh, you know, it's uh, something that's very dear to us, so. We would love to do it. We will definitely try and do it. So, I'd like to thank you, and I hope you're having a great time at Gamescom. It was a pleasure. Bye.